Hi, welcome. Today we will see another mating pattern. So I'm talking about the Greco's mate. So this checkmate is very interesting. And in the end of this video, if you solve correctly all the 10 exercises, you will be able to win a lot of games. And yes, you will be an expert in this area. So let's jump to our video. But before that, did you know that almost 87% of the viewers isn't subscribed? Why don't you like me? I'm a great person and my goal is to help you. So I want you to improve your rating and I want you to be happy when you play your chess games. So to do this, you just need to subscribe this channel, push notifications on. If you enjoy the videos, you can always like and any suggestions or critics you can put on the comments below uh, or talk directly with me by chess.com. So let's go to our video. So when we talk about Greco, who was Greco? Well, very, very quick. Uh, this is the Wikipedia. And Gioacchino Greco was an Italian uh, that lived in the 17th century. On those days, uh, it was normal to die <laughs> early. <laughs> he died with 34 years old. Well, complicated. And one of the great things that Greco done, he annotated all of his moves. And because of that, we, we have a lot of materials of uh, the 17th century. Uh, he created... Uh, openings uh, like Greco's defense, Greco counter gambits, uh, uh, several of them aren't refuted uh, nowadays. But the thing is that for most uh, good players, um, Greco was the Morphe of the 17th century. And of course, this guy was the first, we think, the first um, person to give the smothered mate. And, of course, he has created this Greco's mate. So, let's see. What is the Greco's mate? Well, the Greco's mate is a pattern that is very common. In reality, it's very common. Because, uh, well, the idea is that uh, we will use this pattern. Uh, the idea is that we need to block a square with the bishop or with the queen. And then... Uh, on the file, we will give checkmate. So it's quite simple. We block the square to prevent the king to go away, and we give checkmate uh, with the other piece. Normally, we block with a bishop or a queen, and we give checkmate with the rook or a queen. So that's the idea. Another uh, important thing is that uh, normally, we give this checkmate on the A file or H file. So, if you're playing your, your games and you see that you have some potential on those files, you already know Greco's mate probably will be a good candidate to be used in your games. So, let's go to our first exercise. Forget, this is the theory, you have here the pattern, it's quite easy, and now we will do 10 different exercises. Some are easy, others are medium, and others are hard. I think this is, uh, these are, sorry, uh, easy exercises. So let's go to our first exercise. And well, the first ex exercise, of course, uh, is from a game that has been played by Greco himself. And well, uh, here is the position. And here is white to play. And this is the, our first exercise. If you want, you can put on pause. And of course, here, uh, just to show, the last move was h4. Normally, players under 1500, they, they enjoy a lot to do this. This is a good pattern because after pawn takes, this is very easy. And you want to see, hmm, how can I uh, give checkmate here? Well, uh, the idea, we need to see the potential. We have potential with the rook and we have potential on this file to bring the queen. But this knight is annoying so first we will take the pawn and the thing is that the pawn is attacking the knight of course 
this checkmate is preventable by black, but white is better. For example, d5 could be an idea. But on those days, we are talking about 17th century. So this game has been played in 1620, so <laughs> long time ago. And here, uh, the black player has uh, played that knight to h7. And after that, it's quite easy. We will continue with queen to h5. And technically, this is considered a Greco's mate. Why is that? Because, well, this pawn cannot advance because of the presence of the bishop. So, because of that, this is um, completely uh, finished. So, it's unstoppable, this checkmate. Uh, here, of course, the black player has resigned. But just to show, uh, continuation could be, for example, bishop sacrificing. And after king takes, probably, I don't know, rook e8... But this will finish always on the checkmate, because queen takes f7, king uh, goes to h8, and this is very pretty, because we will sack the rook, and after king takes, queen goes to h5, giving checkmate, because the bishop is controlling the g8 square, and the queen is attacking on the file. Our idea, a queen or a rook attacking the file, and the bishop preventing the king to go away. So, uh, our first position uh, I, I hope you consider it easy uh, because this first position is our. Well, it is just to evaluate your initial level. So uh, the next position has been played by two great players, Nigel Short and even Sokolov. So this game has been played in 1995. So let's jump to our second position. And okay, well. Uh, I'm going to put here correctly the number and well here uh, the last move was this one bishop to c5 and the idea is that we need to see how can we continue this game think a little bit and well we need to find our pattern so we have a queen and a bishop controlling the g8 square the knight is controlling the h7 square. So, how can we give checkmate here? Well, Nigel Short has found the correct idea. And the correct idea is just to play queen to h6. And, okay, this isn't unstoppable. Uh, but, uh, black can uh, survive the checkmate, but the thing is that the black player here, uh, Sokolov, will lose a lot of material. So for this reason, of course, this is always uh, good for white. So the idea is that we are threatening checkmate and black cannot take the knight or else we will play queen to h5 because the bishop is controlling this square and the queen is attacking again. It's always the same. Or queen or rook, it's always the same. So uh, the way of preventing, I'm going to show because, uh, well, uh, I think it's good for everyone to improve uh, the defense, for example, uh, would be bishop sacking, of course, to give a check, and I will be forced to take or, or play king to h1. Uh, and, okay, all, all, of, all of these moves uh, win. Probably king h2 is prettier because the bishop cannot take or else we will give checkmate. And after queen takes g5, uh, well, the idea is that here bishop will take the queen and we will win a lot of material uh, again if pawn takes queen gives checkmate and if knight plays to e7 <laughs> we take it all. So, of course, we don't need to continue this position because this is terrible. This is uh, very, very, very bad for, um, for even Sokolov. So, for this reason, uh, this is beautiful for Nigel Short. So, we've already solved two exercises, and if you solve them correctly, hmm, very well, you're probably at least 1700 uh, of rating. So, let's continue, and let's see if you can solve William Steinitz versus David Janowski. Oh, oh, a great game. This game has been played in 1898, so 19th century. And, well, I, I, I like a lot this position. Uh, is pretty, not, not very complicated, but uh, I think it's pretty. So, 
uh, this is our third exercise and if you want you can put always on pause uh, while I put the photo of Willem Stein, it's okay. Now everything is correct. And here, the last move of Janowski has been knight to c6. And now, how can we give our Greco's mate? Well, the idea is uh, very beautiful because the bishop is controlling this square. And of course, we have the queen on the file. So, uh, we have another uh, advantage, a, a very big one. We don't have any pawn on the h file. For, for this reason, we can put later, for example, a rook on h8. So, if we open this file, we will give checkmate with the rook. So here, William Steinitz, the first uh, official world champion, has played a very beautiful move bishop to g4 and bishop g4 uh, doesn't give forced mates but will win material because of course the idea is quite simple if queen takes bishop we will take the queen and after pawn takes rook plays to h8 giving uh, not a checkmate but winning a lot of material because here exists rook h5 and of course we will take with the pawn uh, why is, isn't that a checkmate? Well, of course, if white plays a different thing, we take and we will give checkmate. But the thing is that white can play g5. But the thing is that we are winning by four full points, so uh, clean points. So uh, this is a completely one position for black. For this reason, this combination is uh, great for Steinitz. Uh, and uh, just very quickly, uh, White doesn't have a uh, battery to play because probably an alternative could be rook takes bishop, but after that, well, you're going to lose the queen. So, in my opinion, this position isn't playable for, um, for white. So, beautiful stuff here. Steinitz was a brilliant player. Uh, I don't know, uh, uh, later we will talk uh, on another video about Steinitz because Steinitz was one of the tragedies of chess because he, he finished his days in a psychiatric um, hospital because um, he had several mental issues uh, i don't know if they were related to chess or not but um, i'm thinking about creating a video about um, mental issues and chess tell me what do you think about that i think is the controversial uh, uh, team but um, interesting too. It's interesting to know uh, a little bit about that. So, next position. Uh, we've already solved three exercises, and if you solve them correctly, you have already uh, 100 of rating. It's a good rating. Now, the next position has been played uh, by another world champion, and uh, this one um one is uh, his game is max oiv and uh, his opponents uh, let's see if i know the name it's elke wiesma <laughs> i don't know probably uh, the accent isn't this this one but well let's go so uh we have oiv and wiesma and uh well uh, in this position, the last move was bishop to e6. Again, don't forget, you can think a little bit. And let's see how can we give our checkmate. This one, in my opinion, is very, very easy. It's one of the easiest uh, exercises. Uh, so how can you give a checkmate? Can you see? Well, let's see our pattern. First, we have a bishop controlling the g8 square. And next, we need to give a checkmate with the rook or with the queen. We don't have the queen, so we will need to give checkmate with the rook. So, to do this, we need to solve the problem of the file. So, back as a uh, pawn on h7, so first we will sack the knight. And this is very strong because this is forced mate because the king doesn't have any available square. And after pawn takes the only available move here, we will continue with rook h4 giving checkmate. So uh, Maxoif 
was a very strong player too. This guy was, uh, has been a world champion and um, he was a beast playing endgame. So he was very, very strong. So you already have 102 uh, 1200 of rating. So, well, not bad, not bad. But hmm, I have more complicated exercises for you. This one isn't very difficult, but it isn't easy too. So we will see right now Michael Adams versus Frizu Nishboya. Let's go. So uh, Michael Adams were uh, playing with black and this is our position. And this is our fifth exercise. So how can we win this position? Well, don't forget, the last move was this one, queen to c1. And we need to solve this problem. Uh, how can we give checkmate? First, let's find our pattern. So the bishop is controlling g1. And we need to give checkmate on the file. So, well, if I sack the knight, this is forced, pawn takes. And after I sack the rook, pawn takes. And after queen takes, it's checkmate. Let's see. One piece, and of course, here, Nish Boyer has, has resigned. But after pawn takes, we will give up everything. Here, probably I would play this move because it's prettier. It's always pretty to sack the queen. And after pawn takes, rook takes, checkmate. It's over. And we have given up a full queen. We are losing by 11 points, but it doesn't matter. This position is one for black. So uh, it's always pretty to, to give checkmate with the queen. I, I love when I give up a queen and I win the game. It's, it's uh, great. I, I, I dream very well that on that night when I give up of my queen and I, I win the games. Uh, the problem is that when, when you play against strong uh, opponents, they resign always. We, we never give checkmate. But I, when I lose, I lose by checkmate almost always, but well, let's go. Five exercises, let's go to the sixth. So, the next exercise has been played by is a romantic player, Adolf Anderson. So, let's go. Adolf Anderson was playing with White and uh, he was playing John Finch. Uh, so, let's go. How can we win this game? Any idea? Well, first we need to see what's happening in this position. Well, uh, here the last move has been queen to e7, and after queen, uh, sorry, here is black. Uh, it's uh, changed the position. So John Finch has won this position. So um, I, I was uh, thinking this was weird. So it's an exercise for black. Sorry. Uh, so here, the last move has been queen, and after queen takes on f2, we need now to solve how can we give a checkmate here on this possession. The first thing that most persons uh, can think is, okay, uh, queen takes on g2, but this doesn't work because the knight will take. So we need to figure out a different way of winning this game, no? Put on pause if you haven't seen this position. This is very, very pretty. So, when we think queen takes on g2, knight takes, we finish almost always our calculations uh, thinking, okay, we will lose material and we will lose this game. But we need to continue the, the evaluation. So, after queen takes, knight takes, it's the only available move, we have a different move. We have rook to h3, checkmate. Fantastic. Brilliant. So here, of course, Adolf Anderson has lost this game. Uh, and, well, uh, I don't know who was John Finch, but uh, this, guy, this guy was strong. 
This guy was strong. Well, about our seventh game, uh, they were giants. And well, when I talk about these uh, two player, those two players, I think everyone knows them. Jose Raul Capablanca was world champion and probably one of the best endgames players of all time. And on the other side, we have Aron Nizovic. And Aron Nizovic um, was a theoretical player, he was a philosophy teacher. And the thing about Nizovic is that he created one of the best books that I, I ever read. Uh, my system. My system is very good. If you haven't read the my system, please read the book. The, the book is very good. And well, here Nizovic uh, has uh, played pawn to b5. And Nizovic never been world champion because he lived on I don't know, uh, not the the best uh, uh, data because. He lived when Capablanca was playing and several other great players. So uh, Nizovic was very strong. And here, the thing is that Capablanca can win this game and he is threatening to give checkmate in five moves. So now this is more difficult. If you solved the last uh, six positions correctly, Okay, probably your uh, 1500 player. So, not bad. But now the thing is, how can you give checkmate here? So, let's see. The first thing is that this king can go to g1. So, we will need to think, how can we uh, give this checkmate? Because probably you're thinking about playing bishop to f2. But... After g3, okay, the position is better for black, but you won't be able to give checkmate. The thing is that, okay, this isn't an uh, un unstoppable checkmate, but after rook plays to f6, white will lose a lot of material. Why is that? Simple. Imagine, if king goes to g1, this will be a forced mate, because uh, we can play bishop to f2, and the bishop is controlling this square and the other is attacking. Of course, the knight is protecting the bishop. And the thing is that here, the king will need to play to h2. And after that, rook h6 gives checkmate. So here, it's important to see all, uh, of, uh, all of the potential that we have. And the thing is that the knight is very well placed. The bishop is well placed too. And after rook plays to f6, uh, the rook is another... Uh, piece that will be useful to attack so here uh, this isn't a good move so uh, Nizovic has uh, played the best move uh, but of course the position is lost and he played bishop takes knight and after that Capablanca has finished the game with a move that threatens unstoppable checkmate so if you want you can put on pause again and the move is simple we want to find our Greco's mate. And to do this, we just need to play bishop to f2. It's checkmate. We are threatening to give checkmate on h6, so uh, even if white plays g3, now the position is different because bishop takes bishop, gives check. These uh, squares aren't available. And after king plays to h2, we can play rook h6 and give checkmate. So this one was more uh, difficult to solve. But let's jump because I have three more positions for you. The next one is this one. Paul Morphy against Thomas Wilson Barnes. So, of course, Paul Morphy has won this game. This is a game from 1858. And, okay, how can you win this game? Well, let's see. The bishop is controlling uh, the diagonal and the rook is controlling the um, g file. But to give checkmate, we need to attack this king. But with the rook isn't good because the king will go away. So we will need to bring a new piece. 
we have this bishop doesn't have any mission so let's work with the bishop so bishop plays to d4 and we will threaten bishop e5 check of course this is a pretty move because uh, here black has, has played the king but uh, i would say that probably uh, most players would play this move uh, to pray that um, black takes the, the pawn but the thing is that even this advances doesn't solve anything because after bishop plays to e5 uh, these squares are attacked are being attacked so the king needs to play here and rook to h6 is checkmate so this is a greco's mate too because the bishops are controlling the escape squares and uh, preventing the, the king to go away so uh, we've already seen eight exercises now let's see the two last ones so uh how is uh, this running for you are you solving correctly all the exercises or or this is too complicated for you please tell me tell me uh how is this running because i want to know if my material is too complicated or if it's too easy for you so let's jump to our two last exercises so uh, this one uh, is uh, very pretty too, I enjoy a lot, and uh, we will see another legend, and well, uh, this uh, legend is Frank Marshall, so uh, the Marshall defense has been created by him, and here Frank Marshall has lost this game, so I, I don't know his opponent, uh, Sidney Payne Johnson, and uh, well, we have the, the photo, uh, uh, I, I think he, he looks a, a little bit scary. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why <laughs> I think this guy is scary. Uh, and, well, how can we win Sidney uh, Payne Johnson? Uh, how, how can we win playing the white with white? I cannot concentrate when I look to this photo. So, uh, here we need to see the potential. And, of course, the first thing is to see the diagonal. And the bishop on c4 is uh, doing some things. Because if we bring the knight to the attack, we will gi give a uh, discovered check. So, now we need to think how can we give the um, Greco's mate. We can play knight to e7 or knight to f6. And, okay, one of these moves is a blunder. Uh, the other one is very good. And the blunder is knight to f6. Because, of, of course, this will lose. Because after king plays to h8, uh, we don't have a way of winning this position. Because here we are losing by three points. So we need to give checkmate or else we will be losing by material. For example, if even if I take the knight, here black can take with the queen and white doesn't have potential anymore. So, the correct idea is just to play knight to f a7. And after that, of course, we are giving a double check. Uh, the king will need to play to h8. And now this is forced checkmate in three moves. And, okay, I think probably uh, lots of um, viewers are thinking about h takes knight. But you have a better move. Please think a little bit, put on pause and try to solve this exercise. Because if you solve this exercise, probably you, you're, um, you have at least a 1700 of rating. At least. So, how can you give checkmate here? Well, the idea is quite simple and very beautiful at the same time. So, we will sack the knight. Because, of course, the bishop is controlling the g8 square. So, the knight is giving check. So, this is the only available move. And after h takes g3, I'm giving check on the file with the rook. Again, our pattern. So, this move is the only move. And after rook takes queen, we have our checkmate. So, brilliant stuff by uh, Sidney Payne Johnson. I don't know who was him. If you know uh, Sidney Johnson, please tell me something because I don't know who was Sidney Johnson. I don't know. Uh, but well, let's go to our last exercise, uh, number 10. And our 10th exercise 
uh, isn't the, the the most complicated, but has been played by a player that I admire. Uh, I think uh, not as a person, but as a chess player, because he, as a person, I think he uh, he had uh, lots of controversies. Uh, controversies. Sorry, I'm talking about Dimmer. Uh, Dimmer, for example, has created the Blackmar Dimmer. So Blackmar uh, was the original creator, but he um, uh, has improved the defense. And because of that, yes, uh, now as the name Blackmar Dimmer. But uh, Dimmer was uh, a person with, I think, mental issues because he spent, I think, 25 years on a psychiatric uh, <laughs> hospital. So, yeah, he had some problems. Uh, but the thing is that he was a great chess player and he had a pretty aggressive style and probably later we will be doing a video about uh, Emil Dimmer because um, he was an interesting person uh, but of course as uh, Paul Morphy, as Steinitz, as Fischer he finished uh, not very well because of the mental uh, problems but well, here is black to play how can you win this position and this is okay this isn't the easiest position and it isn't forced mate so when we look uh, to this position here after g6 uh, white is better but the thing is that white has made this move knight takes g6 and after pawn takes this is completely nuts uh, white is giving a double, uh, a fork, because the knight is attacking the king and the rook. And after king plays to g7, now knight has taken the bishop because the bishop has more value than the rook, because white wins three points. And the thing is that Richard, I think uh, the accent is this, this one, uh, Richard is winning by two points. But no, the position is one for black. So, how can you win this position playing uh, with black? Well, the answer is quite simple. We don't have a bishop controlling the diagonal, but we have the queen. So, here uh, we have our exception. So, after knight plays to g3, one needs to take. And after rook plays to h8, we have our checkmate. So, Dimmer, all, all of uh, Dimmer's games were completely nuts so he was always sacking pieces with his king completely open uh, so i don't know we need to study this guy because this guy was interesting so uh, i want to know how many exercises you solved correctly because if you solved the 10 exercises with any problems probably you have at least 2000 of rating at least 2,000 or 21,000. Uh, if you um, solve half of the exercises, probably you have 1,000 of rating. 1,000 or uh, 1,200, uh, something like that. If you haven't solved any uh, exercise, I have a suggestion for you. First, try to um, do checkmates in one move and then try again because uh, this means you played, uh, you, you started playing uh, probably last week or uh, last month and you need to improve your training. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget, subscribe and I need ideas. So if you know any celebrity that plays chess, if you have any idea about a subject that we have been, uh, haven't been talking here on the channel, or if you see any problem or um, you have any suggestion to improve uh, the layouts uh, or something else, please tell me, uh, put on the comments and uh, you can always talk with me by chess.com. So till tomorrow, tomorrow at the same hour, I will be here to talk a little bit more about chess. Thanks for everyone for the support. We are reaching the eight, uh, 
hundreds um, followers so this seems very good i'm very happy so thanks a lot and still tomorrow bye bye <laughs>